singing there we go oh let me get rid of it there bye angels you'll be back in a short time my name's chris quinlan how are you uh this is melbourne muso's face chook live what an ugly week <laughs> i usually say what a week what a week what a ugly week this has been but i'm gonna make it happier for you We can all go out and see a gig, hopefully with paid musicians. And what I want to do tonight is talk to all my usual things. Is talk about uh, a few scales, I'm going to talk about sticks even, I'm going to talk about a groove and I'm talking about layering a groove as well. I'll explain a couple of things that I'm doing already. Obviously uh, I'm pretty big on the old Celtic influence that so was tattooed on the back of my neck from the day I was born. And what happens is that uh, what I'd like to do tonight on a day where um, pretty much all the uh, COVID restrictions are now being uh, loosened let's say all that biz and uh, what we need to do is just get out there and um, be responsible and be wonderful Melbenians okay and support each other there you go and uh, what happens is that when we're doing things like this uh, we build it up we layer it up um, I'm in a position where I can I have triggers and everything going but you know you might be there with your little mate <laughs> on the old fiddle you know, that kind of thing. On the, uh, on the you know, I went dear uh, the chieftains and all that last month. I'm still sort of thinking about that a little bit. You know, you get out the devil's pencil. Get out the old recorder, mate. Have a little bit of a jam. Hey. And um, what happens is that I'd like to talk about some of the things. Now, I'm going to take the triggers out for them to come back in. And what I'd like to do tonight is talk about layering a little bit there. Let's take a, a groove that everybody sort of knows, right? Let's take a 3-2 club, right? Take diddly. Okay, let's take that. So let's talk about it. First of all, I'll put it on the hi-hat so you can hear me counting it. One and two and three and four and 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 one. There you go. Put it on the snare drum. Put a bit of swing into it. And what I've got there is a bit of a New Orleans rhythm, which I've talked about lots. I love it to death. If you put it on the tom-tom. With the two feel, what you've got is a good old Bo Diddley for many songs. Like Bo Diddley. Bought my girl a diamond ring. And if the diamond ring will shine. Gonna take it to a private eye. There you go. I did a private eye show the other week. <laughs> I could have kissed her with every lip on my face. Steve Martin. Okay. Uh, that's what goes on. So we've got something like a 3-2 clave, right? So we have something like a single stroke roll. When you're doing the accents as a single stroke roll with the right hand start, what goes on is you have right, left, right. A right, 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 left, a right, a right, right. Okay. And when you want to do the the uh, Tootsie pattern, the feet, you have. 
I've got it on two and four there. So if I'm going to be very non-technical, it's uh, right, left, right, both, both, right. Right, left, right, both, both, right. There you go. With a little bit of splash hat in there too. But what happens if you want to make it a bit funky, you know? Rimshot City, keep your eyes on a bargain, Marcus. <laughs> Rimshot City. Boom, ba, boom. So what I've done here is I've got the 3-2 Club A. There we go. French accent. <laughs> I'm not trying to treat you like you're French, Carl. <laughs> Quote from this morning. Anyway, there you go. That was a funny little bit of television. Anyway, so what happens is I've got the uh, three-two clave. Right hand on the hi hat. Do the same thing. sort of like a bit of a funky thing, still based on the 3-2 clave, see? Get it? Got it? Good. And that's Danny Kay. <laughs> I think White Christmas with Bing Crosby, back in the 40s sometime. Anyway, there you go. Uh, but what happens is, there you go. Now, the other week, continuity is something that I like, and uh, what I like to do is uh, tend to uh, split rudiments a little bit. So if I'm going to go... That's still the 3-2 clave, but I'm splitting it up with the tom-toms now, you see? You know, flam them, all sorts of stuff. And that's what starts to go on. So that's a little something. That's the first part of tonight. Okay, so that's the thing. That's the... that sort of thing going there I'm just splashing the hats on the fourth so when it goes like that now what starts to go on now is that you can not only split you know the the rhythm up and layer it up and things like that but um, I have these uh, Promark SD7s and I use them a lot for my music because they got the mallet on the end it's a hard felt mallet and what can start to happen is that well when you're playing cymbals And take the attack away. See, that's what goes on. I'm hoping you can still hear the three-two clave. And uh, what's happening is that because I'm using the mallet end. Uh, it takes away the attack, okay? So, once again. Change the whole tone, see? That's what goes on. So what I do when I start to get on the melodic side of things, uh, I might have the uh, wood tip here. Take this off for a second. Yet again, oh, there you go, because it's a 
it's an ongoing thing, an ongoing theme. I don't want to sort of just do this show and then that show. I want the continuity, okay? And, um, you know, like a recurring theme. So you can develop it, develop it up and um, work it up. And as you work it up, I'll try and add bits for you as I keep on going. That's what it is. That's the idea. <laughs> e. <laughs> so what goes on is there's that. Now, when you're doing things like that, you can swap it around. Now, one of the things... Um, that happens. Uh, this is something that um, Billy Cobham showed me you know, 20 years ago when I was filming him for the show and everything. But he would look at the fulcrum of the stick and uh, what would happen when you're doing things like finger control, what happens is that you have um, the fulcrum uh, where you're relying on the bounce of the stick, you see. However, when you're dealing with um, uh, multi-sticks, is what these are known in, Vic Firth called them swizzle sticks. And uh, what happens is that um, because of the felt, because of the, the, the thick shaft, uh, what happens is the fulcrum tends to change. So what starts to happen is if I'm going to start using the felt side, look how far up the See, if I hold it too far back, uh, like in the normal spot, oh, that's a club. There you go, mate. There you go. So. That's what goes on, you see. It'd be very much halfway. Actually, where the ribbon is in the middle, you see, that's for this particular stick. And that's quite an interesting thing because if you've got a set of heavy sticks and then you want to play a little bit lighter, here's a little trick for you. You can just pull up on the stick a little bit more. And then what happens is the tone starts to change because you've got different kinds of things. Uh, this actually often happens with rim clicks. So you get that. I wasn't going to do that, but anyway, that's the thing about sticks. You can change the uh, fulcrum to get different kind of... People know why these were invented, weren't they? Um, it's productions and classical music. You might be rolling on a cymbal. Then you literally have one beat to change the... Going from match grip to you know, all sorts of things there. Wait, hey, oh. got the picture? Get it? Got it? Good. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go uh, into the harmonic side of the night. I want to introduce you to a scale called the overtone scale. Here we go. It's a great little scale. That is a Celtic hammered dulcimer. The bones. They literally are bones. And I'll put them up there. And what happens is that you go tick a tick a tick a tick tick a tick a tick a tick like that kind of thing. And uh, very Celtic, very European actually. <laughs>
something there for you. And what goes on with that is that, let me talk about this overtone scale that has been uh, used by many a different person. Gives you, with, with the added um, tone of the dulcimer, it gives you quite the Celtic feel. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was talking about the mixolydian mode. Okay. Now, with the mixolydian mode, you've got the one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven octave, and that gives you uh, that. Zappa loved playing in a mixolydian mode. Uh, and um, uh, if you, like, in the most basic of ways, if you think like major happy, minor sad, mixolydian makes you sound a little Irish. There you go. With the overtone scale, um, let me give you the uh, steps, if you will. It is one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven octave. I'll put it here. And um, later on for the, for the show, and beloved channel 31, all that. And if I'm going to do it in C, which is what I have here, happens there is in C it would be C D E F sharp G A B flat and then octave C get it and that's what you got and so what happens then is if I use my uh what you've got you see and there's the uh, sharp four don't call it a flat five because you actually have a five one of the things you want to know about scales is that generally speaking what happens is you want to run so what happens is you don't really have one two three then a flat five then a five what happened to the four so you, you do your best in musical theory to keep the run going one two three four five six seven eight and then you sharp or flat whatever you need and all that. So now, of course, there's exceptions and things like the pentatonic scale and everything I've talked about the last couple of weeks, but that's what goes on there. And what sort of happens is that when you start to combine these things, you start to be able to evoke a certain kind of mood. Now, the overtone scale has been used by uh, some of the most famous of uh, classical I can name Claude Debussy um, uh, for one, that kind of thing. And uh, then you can also uh, talk about Franz Liszt kind of thing. And a bit Franz Liszt, mate. Got on the turf last night. Yeah, what happened? Got a bit Franz Liszt. <laughs> like last week, Mark, is our top shelf. Are you going to get on the beers? No, I might go a bit more top shelf. Anyway, there you go. Bam! And what happens is that you also have some of the 20th century composers like Bela Bartok. Ooh, I love him. He's very, oof, very serious and all that. And um, he would, um, 
I'll talk about Baylor Bartok. I'll put him up there again and all that. But uh, what happens is that a uh, wonderful composer, um, Chick Corea's uh, favourite composer, I believe, um, beloved Chick Corea, who passed away not oh, about a year ago or whatever. I did a tribute show to him. Uh, but what it is is um, he was a musicologist. And so in the 1930s, he would go into the European forest and seek out gypsies and all that and record their music and do all that. And um, it's fascinating. And he would bring these Hungarian, if you like, folk melodies and put them into his, you know, string quartets, his pieces and all sorts of stuff. And um, one of the things they used was the overtone scale. It's known by a few different names, but the main one is overtone. At least that's the way it was taught to me many a year ago. And what happens is that with that, um, you start to get an edge on how the sounds, how the moods are created. Okay, so that's what goes on there. So as I said, it's uh, the first, the second, the third sharp or five, six, flat, seven, and octave. Okay, so there you go. Um, in, in a funny, strange kind of way, if you want to think of it like that, uh, with the flat seven, it's very close, it's related to the mixolydian. And when you've got a sharp four, that's the blue note for a blue scale. So it's a wonderful kind of little obscure kind of thing, but what starts to happen, and it gives you this tone, and, and it's, a, it's a little bit pentatonic, if you want to think of it like that. And because of the flat seven, and it's a little bit blue scale, you know, that kind of thing. And um, there it is. There's the note to see. You can play around with it. Now, bones. To a dream sequence. Let's uh, put the girls. Hello, ladies. You're back. Oh, go over to here. Start thinking about wrapping the show up. I hope you're getting something out of these little morsels of a... If you tap light enough, you get under the threshold.
tonic. Thank you very much, umpire. Anyway, there you go. And uh, what happens with that is that with the overtone scale and then the dulcimer, then you use your sticks, the SD7s, and you use the rims for the bones, and then you put things around. You are way past the local door cut take kick there. <laughs> What you're doing is you're using your... Your nouse. Where can this go? Jumbaya. So there's my show. There you are. I'll keep it nice and short. And what we have is I've got my little notes here. Three, two, clave. Hey, boom. Oh. I want candy. <laughs> oh boy. Overtone scale. Known by a few names. Um, but um, look it up. And I'll go over it again if you like. It's the one, the two, the three, sharp four, five, six, flat seven, octave. There you go, and it gives you that sound. Hammered dulcimer, patch, SD7, sticks. What else have you got? Bones. There you go. And I'm out of here. One thing. Ah, oh, ah, I didn't do this. Oh, I've got to put it in. Uh, 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 uh. Bring in the ladies.